Bentornati, everyone. Welcome back to our program. Thank you so much for joining us today. Wherever you are tuning in from across this beautiful country of Canada, we thank you so much for spending some time with us each and every Sunday. Well, from, first, from, its, from its first day, June 20th, 1998, the Gatehouse mission has been to give children of sexual abuse their voices back. Since then, thousands, from children to adults, have been healed by that power. And to give us more information on that, but also their upcoming ev uh, event and the Gatehouse, I'm very pleased to welcome Antonietta, um, Antoniette uh, Maiola, volunteer with Gatehouse. Thanks for joining us today. Buon pomeriggio a tutti. Buon pomeriggio, Antonietta. Thanks for joining us. So listen, this is an incredible organization uh, that started uh, way back in 1998. Can you give us a sense of, of those, those first moments when those doors were opening and a little bit of that history? Yes, so uh, the founder, his name is Arthur Lockhart, and, and he saw a need for uh, people to have an, a, an avenue, a venue, where they could go and speak about childhood sexual abuse. Because there's a lot of shame uh, around it. Um, sometimes the perpetrators can actually be family members, in which case it's, it's difficult to speak out. And so offering a safe, supportive place is um, what Arthur wanted to do. So Antonietta, can you give us a sense um, of what, you know, what that looks like here in Canada, a kind of a, an idea of how common uh, child sexual abuse is in this country or in Ontario, if you want to be even closer? Sure. sure. Allora, secondo i dati, uh, uno su ogni tre ragazze, uno su quattro ragazzi, sono vittime di sexual childhood abuse. And for some of the survivors, it's difficult for them to, to come forward about what happened to them. Most of the time it happens when they're adults. Mm. Well, that's what I was gonna mention too. I mean, a lot of times it does, when you get, re get into adulthood, is that's when you start to see people, I guess, um, you know, for whatever the reasons that in that moment come forward. Why do you think that is, um, you know, or what's, what is not in place, do you think, when they're children that they have that the, the necessity to come out and speak at that moment. Of what is course. stopping them? What's stopping them? So definitely what could be stopping them is the shame. And what I mentioned earlier is that sometimes the perpetrator is a family member, in which case coming forward and revealing this information is very challenging. You know, some of the other factors that impact their decision to come forward and deal with their emotions and the trauma that they witnessed and experiences, perhaps it might be that they're encountering addictions. It might be that the relationship with their loved ones and significant others is impaired. It might also be that they can't maintain a job. And so all of these factors contribute to, their, to, to the way they're living their lives. And at the Gatehouse, they have support there. They have a variety of different programs where they can be heard, where they feel safe, where they can speak about what has happened and without living in shame any longer. What are some of the different types? Because I, I, I would think that sometimes people, when they hear, you know, uh, you know, sexual abuse, it, their mind goes in one direction. But, but you know, to be clear, there are different types of child sexual abuse. Can you give us a sense of what that could, what that could mean? So, if viewers are watching, they, they might, you know, to be educated on that. Sure. So, um, for childhood sexual abuse, you know, sometimes some of the things you might see is that the person is, you know, quiet, they isolate themselves. Like I mentioned before, it might be that they engage in addictions. And sometimes someone who has suffered from childhood sexual abuse also is suffering from mental abuse, physiologic, like their body is impaired, also physical abuse, mental abuse. And so some of these things impact one and the other. And so what makes Gatehouse unique in its approach to, to healing and giving their voices back? Right. Well, they're very supportive. And um, I, I've been volunteering there for two years. And the uh, program in which I found a Gatehouse is called Expressive Arts Therapy. Therapy através de outras espécies, então os participantes utilizam diversas modalidades, como a música, a poesia, body movement, um, and so it's through those different, at least that particular program, it's through this program where they get engaged in their senses, they engage in their emotions in a safe place where uh, they're not going to be hurt again, where they're going to be hurt, where there's other victims who also have suffered from childhood sexual abuse. It's like a community uh, of people in, at the gatehouse who support each other, and that's their goal. And we get to see oftentimes, you know, when you hear the stories after um, these wonderful, the work that gets done there is how they get healed. And 
uh, and that road to, be, uh, to, to being healed. Um, and there was a, the, an article that was written this past summer, and I know that you're aware of it. And, and for those who've read the article, they'll be aware of it too. It's, it was the daughter of Alice Monroe, of course, famed uh, Canadian short story writer, Nobel Prize winner as well, I think back in 2013. But having said that, more importantly, it's the story her daughter told, right? Uh, Andrea Robin Skinner about her child's sexual abuse experiences growing up and how for the longest time there was no one out there to support her. Uh, but when, as an adult, when she finally had the, 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 the strength to go out there and get different support, she came to Gatehouse and she got her voice back. And I brought that up because that only is about the story, but more importantly, and I think you'll agree when you read the article, you can feel the healing in there, right? You can feel that she got her voice back. What are your thoughts on that? Right. So in 2014, her siblings, Andrew, Jenny and Sheila, um, they came to the gatehouse and they spoke with Maria, who's the executive director, and Arthur, the founder. And they wanted to, the siblings wanted to reconcile with Andrea. Their family became estranged and they wanted to start the process of healing. And so in coming to the to the gatehouse, where there are other people who have suffered from you know, family abuse, uh, childhood sexual abuse, and the perpetrator was a family member, they get to share their stories and to feel like they're not alone, they're not isolated, that they they too are a member of society. So it it's just wonderful the support that they all get. And in this particular family uh, with Andrea, they were able to at least slowly move forward in, in the healing process. Well, that's why this event is so important, right, Antonietta, the sixth annual Healing the Voice Within. Um, very important for people to get out there and support. As I mentioned, Shin has been a proud supporter of this event for since the beginning. But, but more importantly, give us a sense of that evening, uh, what we can expect and why we should get out there and support and how it helps the programs. Sure. Well, uh, there's a lot of donations that are made. Um, it's happening October 3rd. It's a 70s theme, so that should also be fun. I biglietti sono ancora disponibile. Olivia Chow is going to be there. Um, there's some other important figures there. And it's about our voices. It's about speaking about it, because when we speak aloud about what's going on, then it makes it something we all can manage. We all work towards so that we can at least try and eliminate these things from happening. You know, putting the putting the word out there is what's important. It's being educated, getting the information and seeing what you can do to help and providing donations for the Great House is one way in which you can uh, help. Wonderful. I want to thank you so much for your time, Antonietta. And, and of course, if anybody is at home watching, um, it is a safe place. So if there, if there are any questions you have or anything you'd like to know, you can definitely call the Gatehouse and uh, they will be there for you. Yes? Thank you. Yes. And we look forward to seeing you on October 3rd. That's fantastic. I want to thank you again for your time, Antonietta. Have a wonderful thank Sunday. You. And uh, I know all the great work that you do as a volunteer with Gatehouse. We thank you for that. Okay. Grazie. Grazie. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.